Hey Jackals, today we'll use some points to make a shape, then we'll use some shapes to connect them with lines, and lastly we'll do the same in the 3D space. And what's unique about this approach is that all of the connections will be made automatically and they will also adjust automatically. Now let's get digital. If you're new to DaVinci Resolve, what you'll want to do first is make a new fusion composition and you do that by going to the media pool, right click, new fusion composition, you can give it a name, change the duration, I'll just leave it as is, and put it on the timeline. And then go into the fusion page. I'll first make an ellipse, just so we have a shape, and I'll use a background node, so you can see it. I'll make the ellipse smaller, just like that, and I'll add the transform node. So we'll do the actual animation inside this, and we can also scale it down with the size if we need to. I'll change the background so it's a little bit more visible and I'll also add the black background at the end. So now if you want to move the ellipse, you would go to the transform and move it around. As you can see, this affects the center position, X and Y. I'll double click to reset it and what you'll want to do is to right click, go to modify with, then click perturb, we will now get random values in the x and y direction. If you don't like how this animation behaves, you can go to the modifiers and adjust the x scale, y scale, random seed, either by clicking on it or dragging the slider. And you can also adjust how strong the effect will be, adjust the wobble, and adjust the speed of the animation. So I'll have three points, so I'll just copy these nodes and the only thing that I'll do is first connect them and after that's done I'll simply change the color so we have something different. So now all of the ellipses are in the same position, so I'll go to this transfer, go to the modifiers and simply click the reset button and do the same in this one. So now we have three ellipses floating ground, and what we want to do next is to connect them with the line. In this case, I only have three ellipses, so there is only one way to connect all of them, but if I had more, like maybe five, now in this case I have a lot more connections that I could do if I wanted to connect all five of them. I hope you get the idea, but I'll just use three ellipses. So now we have the points, and if you don't want any shapes, we could just remove them and have just the transforms. So now to make the line, I'll use a polygon and the background to change the line color. And this can also be a gradient if you wanted to. I'll first do one line and then I'll simply make copies of it. Now don't have to be at the beginning, you can be anywhere that you want on the timeline. And you don't have to click somewhere close, you can click anywhere that you want. Now the polygon selected, you want to select all of the points, in this case two points, but you don't want to click like this, you want to use this command, select all points. Then right click, go to polygon polyline, publish and click publish points. Now you get two points, both points have an x and y value and we will connect those points to the points of the ellipses. So let's say the first one is this one, which in this case is yellow, and we have the blue one and the red one. Now right click on a point, go to connect to, perturb, value, and the second one will be the second value. So we have a line, but before we can see the line, we need to increase the border width, so something like that, and we can also adjust the soft edge. We have a line between the two dots, over the two ellipses, and you can simply also press Ctrl T if you want the line to be behind the ellipses. Now I'll simply copy the polygon two times and simply connect it. Now the second value will be maybe this one will be. Now it helps if you don't copy the nodes because the names can get confusing. In this case, this perturb is one two. This one is 1-1 one, one, and this one is 1. 
So in this case, I've connected it to 1.3 and this one will be then perturb 1.2. And the last line, I want it to be from blue to red. So let's see which ellipse is which. So it's this one and this one. And this should be perturb 1.1 one one and perturb 1.2. So go to this polygon and connect these two points. 1.1 one one and 1.2. And now we have the lines and the ellipses connected and they move independently of each other while staying connected. Now the next example is to use three transforms or more of them to make a shape. I'll simply use a polygon and the background. In the polygon I'll make three points because I have three transforms. Select all of the points, right click, polygon polyline and publish points. I'll simply now connect the points to these three transforms. So this is 1-1, one, 1-1, one, one one, and 1-2. One I now have a shape. What I've done in the intro is basically add a mirror node and I've enabled a second one 90 I think and the third one at minus 45 just like that. Now in this case I would maybe need to use a transfer node and I'll change the color so it's a little bit more visible. So let's scale this down and position it 0 0.25, 0 0.25 so we have everything down here. Now in this case it doesn't work so let's adjust the positions maybe something like this. You can then add some soft glow. If you want to spice up the effect, just adjust the settings to what you want. And again, you can use a background just like here, like so. And for the last example, which may be a bit complex, is with the 3D. The principle is similar, but we don't have any polygons in the 3D space. I'll make a 3D shape. In this case, I'll make a sphere, so shape 3D. If we want to display it, we need to render it out. So connect it like that. In the shape 3D node, I'll select a sphere. I'll scale this down, maybe to 0 0.5. We can adjust the subdivisions by base and height if we need to and I'll change the color. Now we want to make the shape move around and we'll do that in the transform translation by adjusting the X, Y and Z position. But we won't be doing that manually, we'll be doing this automatically. So we'll right click each property and modify it with perturb. Do this for X, Y and Z. And currently it's just going diagonally. So what we want to do is go to the modifiers. Now we have three perturb values and you can simply click on the recede, make some adjustments and this will change how this sphere will behave. Maybe something like that. Now we'll make a copy of this one and connect them. And now we'll simply go to the modifiers and make some adjustments. And lastly, we'll want to go to tools and change the color so that you can differentiate between the two. So we have a movement like that. Now currently this is just flat. You don't see if there is any difference. So we can add some light to this. Let's see which one should we use. Maybe directional light. Let's add it. So we'll add some light from here and we have to enable it in the render. So click on it and enable the lighting and the shadows. Why not? Now we can adjust the intensity and add some red lights. This time I'll use point light. I think that's quite enough so that we can see that this is a 3D space. Now here comes the fun part. 
have said that we don't have a polygon in the 3D space to connect these two shapes, but what we do have is a node called ribbon. So we'll connect it. Now currently, as you can see, we see the ribbon on the left in the 3D space, but we don't see it on the right in the 2D space in the media out. I have no idea if this is an issue with the winch resolve in this version, so what I did to fix it is go to the render node and choose the render type to OpenGL. Now we don't see any changes yet, so I'll go to the background and connect it to the ribbon. I'll change the color, well it's black now and it is slightly visible, so I'll just change the color to Actually, I'll make a gradient. The first one will be like pink and the second one will be blue. Like that. Now you can clearly see it here, but not here. So what you have to do, at least in this case, is adjust the width and we'll make it small so that we get more like a line like this. We'll adjust the thickness and that's a little bit more what we want to get. Now what we want to do is to connect these two points from the ribbon, which as you can see are the ending points and that is what will connect to these two spheres. So in the ribbon 3D, as you can see we have the start and the end and what I'll do is simply right click on each of the X, Y and Z and connect them to the appropriate sphere. So the first sphere has 2, 3 and 4 and the second one has 2-1, 3-1 and 4-1. And that is basically it. This is at least one way that I know of how to connect two spheres in the 3D space with the line that keeps changing based on the distance between the spheres. All that's left to do is to maybe add the background, add the camera if we wanted to, add some more lights and maybe a soft glow to spice things up a little bit, just like that. And with that, the video is done. If you liked it, give it a thumbs up, subscribe to my channel if you want to see more DaVinci Resolve and video editing content and hit the bell notification icon so you know when my next video comes out. I'm Simon and until next time Jackals, keep it digital.